When I was a young kid, or around 10 I want to say, one of my favorite animated cartoons of all time was a popular adult comedy called Family Guy. It was great for a young lad such as myself. I loved the wacky Griffin family and their many adventures, laughing, crying alongside them, rooting for them to succeed in whatever challenge came their way. Although despite the show starring the titular guy and his aforementioned family, I also find myself absolutely adoring a plethora of the many, many side characters, with the mean ones being Peter's neighbors, Quagmire, the sex-addicted bachelor who had to be removed of that treat to keep up with the times, Cleveland, who went from a somewhat boring voice of reason who ended up getting their own spin-off for a while and I just kinda hangs around, and then there's Joe, possibly the most interesting secondary character in the series. Joe began the show as Peter's new heroic policeman neighbor, who he initially butt heads with but eventually became one of his best friends, joining on his many misadventures. He was loved, respected, and voiced by the Chad Patrick Warburton. And I almost forgot to mention that he's paralyzed from the waist down and in a wheelchair. With the reason I forgot being that this isn't something they try to use as a weakness for the character. Instead, they continuously show that despite this presumed handicap, Joe was able to rise above it, not get him down and continue protecting his town, friends, and family. I think that's something to be respected with Joe. Although I guess I should be saying was something to be respected, because as the show went on, this man who was once beloved by his peers and family started to change. He stopped being so respective. His family stopped caring about him. They delve more into his disdain with the wheelchair he's bound to. And overall that Joe is, rather than unfazed by the hand he was dealt, he's in fact quite miserable. Becoming jaded, mocked, even suicidal. Rather than the town hero, he was now the town jester, to be pointed and laughed at. And laugh that did. So if all this it got me wondering, how did such a massive shift in character happen? Did it progress gradually? Were there any hints of this direction in the series' early years? And just how bad did it truly get? So without further ado, let's take a deep dive into the character of Joe Swanson, and see what made him roll into obscurity. <gasps> but first... Did you know that today's video is brought to you by none other than Manscaped.com? Yeah, Manscaped.com. You know, the global leader in man's grooming tools and hygiene? Come on, they've been in like a dozen videos at this point, you must have heard about them and their many amazing men's grooming products, such as the newly introduced Platinum Package 4.0. You know, the one that contains their two-in-one body wash that cuts shower time in half. How about their new aluminum free stick deodorant? If that's not your style, then it also contains the Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant, Lawnmower 4.0 Electric Trimmer, and their Nose and Ear Hair Trimmer. Really? None of that ring a bell? Well, then you best head down to Manscaped.com, and be sure to let them know I sent ya, by using promo code Alice Market Checkout for 20% off, plus two free gifts, the Shed Travel Bag and Boxer Briefs. Once again, go to Manscaped.com today, and get 20% off, plus two free gifts by using promo code Alice Market Checkout. And thanks again to Manscaped.com for sponsoring this video. I think compared to my Brian character analysis from last year, the difference between him and Joe is that he was held in such high regard by the characters he surrounded himself by. Brian was a dog. A majority of the jokes they made in the early years simply revolved around the fact that he was an animal doing people things, which eventually delved into the concept of him being sick of not being seen like any other person around. It wasn't like that with Joe. So I think to start off, it'd be good to take a look at the way he was introduced to the series and what the original perception of him was. He can hit, he can throw. Taylor! What's he doing in a wheelchair? Holy crap, he's a crapple! See, Joe is a rare case for a sitcom in that he wasn't originally part of the regular cast, instead being introduced with his own episode, Season 1 Episode 5's A Hero Sits Next Door, where he moves into the house next to Peter with his pregnant wife Bonnie. I always liked the fact that Peter initially didn't like Joe, thinking he would just become a bothersome freeloader like the rest of his neighbors. They might be very nice people. Very nice people, yeah, that's what they always say. Then you open up the septic tank and BAM! Skeleton City. But then after finding out that he was a great softball player, he now wants to suck up to Joe so that he'll join his company softball team, so that therefore he'd get the credit for enlisting him, with the grand reveal being that he's paraplegic. The joke being less about, ha, huh, he's in a wheelchair. That's just, just an awful sign bite to have out there. You should subscribe for more epic bangers like that one. But more so, the joke is about how much shit Peter is about to get in for riding their entire game on his own job on a man who can't even walk. 
Of course, the payoff here is that Joe is in fact a great asset to the team that leads them to victory, where he's met with analysts praised throughout the time for being able to overcome such adversity. It was a genuinely shocking realization to see just how little jokes they have about the fact that Joe can't walk, and when they do, it's always in the context of how awful a character is for saying it. Let's see him do this! Hey, look at me! I'm walking! Oh, I'm a remarkable man! This is shocking because one of Joe's main character traits as the series went on was simply... Aha, he's in a wheelchair! An important aspect, though, is that there was more depth to him than simply being Peter's better-off neighbor. There was more to him than just being Family Guy's Ned Flanders. He was his own unique individual who we saw go through a series of vastly different emotions. Case in point? Season 3, Episode 15's Ready, Willing, and Deceivled. Where we see Joe reach a low point and lose all of his self-confidence after losing a thief due to being in a wheelchair. I lost the per- Ugh. Here, Peter actually tries to build him up by entering him into the Special Olympics and secretly giving him steroids so he'd win and therefore build up his confidence again. Not only do we see a side of him that's maybe not so tough and unaffected with the hand he's been dealt, but also once he wins the event, he starts to get an ego, abandoning his friend Peter for his newfound fame and fortune, showing that he can let stuff get to his head at times and maybe isn't the perfect Samaritan that he was initially presented as in his introduction. A more extreme example of this sort of concept is the focal point of Season 6 is, believe it or not, Joe's walking on air where he finally is given the ability to walk again and becomes a huge asshole to all of his friends, eventually abandoning them for new buddies who he thinks can keep up with his new style of life. Despite the drastic change in character here, I don't really mind it at all that much in the context of the episode, as it remains as nothing more than a funny little what-if scenario that they go back on by the conclusion. Although it for sure shows somewhat of a turning point, I believe, where they've pushed this side of Joe to his absolute extreme, and from around this point on, we started to see a shift. As the show progressed, Joe's disability became more and more of a crutch for the writers to make simple disability jokes, because I can only assume it was an easy laugh. Well, it's just me and my old nemesis. First step. Honestly, though, I would take that over what this new mindset is when writing him, with these jokes being exaggerated more and more, to the point where I can't help but look at Joe and just go, what a sad man. Wheelie wheelie stupid head, bet you wish that you were dead. Listen, I don't know who this is, but you better cut it out. There are countless jokes that simply boil down to, whoa, did you know that Joe can't do this basic thing because he's in a wheelchair? Like they think they're somehow breaking new grinds on the topic. But beyond that, they can't just make him miserable, but everyone around him is now made miserable by proxy of being around him. The biggest running gag beyond his wheelchair that they make with the guy now is that he'll tell a dumb dad joke and everyone will sit around explaining how unfunny the joke is, and after the millionth time, it just gets kind of pathetic. Have an adventure for Whoa, 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 what's that song? Nothing. I made it up. Well, stop it, it's terrible. I think the prime example of the character's disdain towards him would be with his wife, Bonnie, who started writing this show as his loving wife who was proud of how much he was able to overcome his obstacles, even if she was a little boring. Like, they ran that pregnancy thing into the grind, and I could tell they were trying to look for new ways to make her more interesting after having a baby. But where they went with her was probably the worst possible decision they could have made. From this point on in the series, Bonnie hates Joe, plain and simple. She despises the fact that she's married to him and is not afraid to make everyone aware of it, literally attempting to plan his murder at certain points in the series. I'll take it. Honestly, though, I wish this just remained as the occasional joke they made. But they go out of their way at times to revolve entire stories around how sick of him she is. One of my least favorite episodes in the entire series is Season 9's Foreign Affairs for that very reason. The episode features Lois and Bonnie headed to France for a vacation, where throughout the entire holiday, Lois witnesses her try to cheat on Joe because she's so sick of him. Even though she wants to cheat on him with another guy in a wheelchair, I don't think they thought that joke out very well. But it seriously presents Bonnie as such an unlikable bitch. She was never one of my favorite characters, I seriously doubt she's in anybody's top 5. Let me know if we got any Bonnie Swanson stands in the comments below. But from this point on, I couldn't stand her. Every scene she was in, she'd just stand around like an emotionless block of wood who's clearly fed up with her life. And others clearly agree with me too, with comments like, Bonnie never deserved Joe. I hit Bonnie so much. Joe did the right thing. Damn, boy. Wait, that doesn't belong here. And because of course they'd have to, they apply this same mindset to good old Joe as well, having an entire episode revolving around Joe wanting to kill himself, and Peter and gang trying to prevent him from doing so. Yes. Goodbye, fellas. <laughs>
Much like the Simpsons episode where Mo wants to kill himself, I seriously don't know why this is such a common trend in these shows. Family Guy has a similar concept with season 13's hashtag JOLO, which is just a fucking terrible title. We see Joe inviting his friends on an impromptu trip to Niagara Falls, where it's revealed that he planned on killing himself after spending one last week with his buddies, with them obviously stopping him from doing so, but also not really doing anything about it. Like, they prevent him from falling, sure, but nothing meaningful is really done to show his new lease on life. Eventually, he just saves Peter and Fellas from dying, and suddenly he loves life again. Stuff like this is just really sad to sit through because despite the lighthearted tone the show never deviates from, the general idea itself is still so sad. It's too real to play off in such a non-consequential way. I think all this builds up to create a character that's just painful to watch a majority of the time. When we're not watching how much his friends hate him, we're watching how much his very presence annoys his wife. And when we're not watching that, we're watching him languish and how sad his life is, and it becomes depressing to watch. I think the thing that bothers me most about this is that the show can occasionally have an episode that shows the best part of his character. Shows me what I liked about him in the first place. Ironically enough, I think a good example of something they do with Joe is a direct sequel to Foreign Affairs, Season 10's Internal Affairs. Here we see Joe be tempted by a girl at work who wants to fuck him, which leads to him cheating on Bonnie for once. It's not a great episode, but the idea alone is something that I really like. With Joe finally being the one in power for a change, it's a nice contrast to see compared to the usual joke of Bonnie not wanting to be around him. It sort of falls off with the lame reveal that Bonnie never actually had sex with the guy in France, and now Joe's gotta make it up to her in some way. Which is sweet when looked at in a vacuum, but I don't really care if she fucked him or not, the intent to do so was still there on top of all the other shit she's done to the guy. Not to mention, throughout the whole beginning of the episode, Bonnie clearly shows no interest in Joe at all, so I seriously don't even know why she feels so betrayed over what he did, as if she ever gives shit about him. I, I meant to call someone else. Oh. Yeah. So how is everything? But again, I like the idea of them playing with their power dynamic for once. And besides from Bonnie, I think another great example of a modern Joe episode is Season 11's Joe's Revenge, in which we learn that the backstory Joe gave in his introductory episode, for why he's paralyzed, was actually fake, with Peter and Quagmire joining him in trying to catch the guy and take him down. Like I said in my video ranking all the Fami guys, it's not the funniest episode out there, but I very much appreciate the scope this one has, with the characters going on a grand old adventure to find and kill the guy. You know, it actually presents Joe as kind of a badass for once, finally getting his revenge on the guy who he believes ruined his life. It kind of shows a conclusion to his arc, even though he doesn't really have one, but you know what I mean. It sucks that it's evident the writers do have the ability to write Joe as a cool, likable character every once in a while, but simply choose to more often than not present him as the butt of a joke because it's easier. But at least they occasionally can pull a funny moment with him out of their ass. Even if it is, again, mostly down to the godly performance Patrick Warburton gives. I think my scary, otherworldly, shadowy spirit friends might have something to say about that. But with all this being said, I suppose the point I'm trying to get at here is that it's sad what happened to Joe Swanson. But even if the writers choose to forget, I'll always remember him for being the cool, heroic guy whom he once was.